Well, microeconomics students, uh, Professor Lewis here for the last video for unit one. We're going to be talking about the other elasticities besides price elasticity of demand. E sub D or price elasticity of demand is the most important one, but there's three others in the principles classes we talk about because these deal with the sensitivity of quantity demanded or supplied in response to change of something else measured in terms of dollars. So we're going to go ahead and share that screen. And let me pull up the PowerPoint slideshow and narrate a bit, and then we'll go through an example. So other elasticities we're going to be dealing with here. First of all, the general elasticity formula is given on this slide. It's a concept that measures the relative sensitivity of a percentage change in some quantity related to a percentage change in a dollar value commodity. Uh, the percent change of quantity is always in the numerator and percentage change in dollar value commodity is always in the denominator. If you take a look at down here, E sub question mark, that could be QD, it could be a D or an S or something else, is equal to percent change in quantity question mark. And again, the question mark could be D for quantity demanded or S for quantity supplied or something else, divided by percentage change dollar sign. And the dollar sign could be the price of the same good. It could be the price of a different related product. It could be the income of the consumers, or it could be the cost of a resource. So just bear this in mind that if you forget a specific elasticity formula, if you can get percentage change quantity above percentage change of whatever's in dollars, you've got the formula at least and can simplify it. Now, three elasticities to know about. First one is the, called the income elasticity of demand, and that is E sub I, and please note I stands for income. We're only going to be concerned with the point formula, the one that I'm circling here. Percent change quantity demanded divided by percent change in income. We're not using the midpoints formula. Now, E sub I is not like E sub D. Remember, E sub D could be zero or it could be negative, but it could never be positive. E sub I could be positive, it could be negative, or it could be equal to zero, depending upon the relationship between the quantity demanded to the consumer's income. A negative E sub I means if income drops, people buy more of the product or vice versa, tells you it's an inferior good. You know, think about a beat up old used car. If you've had a pay cut but need a replacement vehicle, you're going to go ahead and uh, only buy a replacement one if you've, uh, that's used. You're not going to buy a new one because of the drop in income. Uh, on the other hand, if your income goes up, why would you buy somebody's beat up old used car when you could buy a brand new car? And so negative E sub I means inferior goods. Positive E sub I means normal or superior goods. When income levels rise, people buy more of a product. That is typical of luxury products, and it's also typical of uh, normal products as well. A brand new Honda Civic, a brand new Cadillac Escalade, you'd buy more of those kind of products if your income went up and fewer as it goes down. Some products are what we call income neutral. They have an E sub I that's exactly zero. It means it does not matter if income goes up or go down, people will buy the same amount of the product regardless. Certain staple items like water and electricity would qualify as income neutral. And so we're gonna do a couple of calculations over here. And this is taken from our unit one practice problems number six. And what you have to do is use the phrase rise, drop, or increase or decrease to figure out is this percentage positive or is it negative? That's kind of the way that goes here. And so here we've got E sub I is equal to percent change quantity demanded divided by percent change in income. It says if income rises 10%, that's a positive 10. Quantity demanded rises 4%, that's a positive four. And so, excuse me just one second here. Let me go ahead and unhighlight this and show you what we get when we do this here. This is how we do it, baby. You start by plugging in the 10 in the denominator for the percent change in income and the four in the numerator for the percent change quantity demanded, and then you have to reduce this. Please, no decimals, stick to fractions. You factor a two out of the top and the bottom, you get a positive two fifths. And so that is your income elasticity coefficient. Now, this is a positive income elasticity. Income goes up, but they buy more of them. Which kind of product is that? Do, 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 normal or superior good. Now, for part B, it's the same coefficient, E sub I, but this time you're told if income rises 5%, is that a positive or negative 5? Positive. Quantity demanded drops 10%. Is that positive or negative? It's negative 10. 
So when you plug those numbers in the formula, the denominator is going to get a uh, positive 5, and the numerator is going to get a negative 10. And then you got to reduce this. This is an integer, a whole number that's negative, negative 2. And that should say less than 0. Don't confuse that with the Robert Downer movie, by the way. You want to see a real case of a, of a bad time, watch less than zero starting Robert Downey. Since the income elasticity coefficient is negative, this tells us that when income goes up, people buy less of these products. That can only be one kind of good. It also means if income goes down, they buy more. That's going to be an inferior good. All righty. So that's your first elasticity coefficient. Now let's talk about the next one you got to know about. And that's called the cross price elasticity of demand. You've got two products A and B. We're measuring the percentage change in quantity demanded for product A in relation to a percentage change in the price of the different product B. This is not the same as E sub D because E sub D deal with quantity demanded and price for the same product. Just like E sub I can be positive or negative, but it has to deal with how is product A related to product B. If you have a negative E sub AB, that means if the price of product B goes up, they buy less of product A and vice versa. That tells you these products are complementary goods. Think about it. If the cost of video game consoles started dropping, then the number of, say, controllers, the number of video games would increase because people that don't have current consoles would buy a new one. And what do you usually buy when you buy a new console? You buy a second controller and you buy some video games to play. The flip side is if you have a positive E sub AB, the price of product B goes up, people buy more of product A and vice versa, tells you these products are substitutes in consumption, not substitute goods, substitutes in consumption. Remember, there are also substitutes in production. So the thing is the price of butter goes up, people buy more margarine. Butter and margarine are not the same thing. And so a positive E sub AB indicates substitutes in consumption. Now, E sub A B could be zero. You could be told it doesn't matter if the price of B goes up or goes down 5%. People do not change the amount of product A they buy. Zero divided by five is zero. Zero divided by negative five is zero. When you have a case where the price of B goes up or down and there's no change in the amount of A bought, that means that they have no relationship in consumption. If the price of gasoline goes up or goes down, the quantity bought of milk does not change at all because they are unrelated in consumption. All righty. So let's go over here and we've got parts C and D, which are cross price elasticities of demand. It says here, if the price of product B goes up 6%, the quantity of demand of product A drops 11%. So is that six positive or negative? It says it goes up, that suggests positive. Is that 11 positive or negative? It says it goes down, that suggests negative. And so we plug these in by putting the positive six on the bottom, the, po the negative 11, pardon me, up top, and that doesn't reduce. We just move the negative to the front. That's a negative 11 over six. A negative E sub AB indicates how are these products related in consumption? Price of B goes up, people buy less of A. That means A and B are used together. They are called complementary goods. All right. Now, don't worry about that black box here. I will get that thing unhighlighted in just a second here once I get my I-beam to cooperate. All right. Now, for part D, it's also asking for E sub A, B. It says if the price of product B goes up 3%, the quantity demand of product A goes up 7%. Notice they both go up. So that means the sign on both of them is positive. So we're going to plug those into that formula again. And so what you're going to have here is you're going to have positive 7 over 3. And again, that doesn't reduce. Please, no decimals. Just stick with the fraction. Since E sub AB is positive, the price of B goes up, people buy more A. That means they're using A in the place of B. They are substitutes of consumption. Okay. I'm trying to do the big reveal and it doesn't want to reveal itself. Oh, well. Okay. A and B are substitutes of consumption. All righty. Now, our last elasticity we're going to learn about, and again, please note we're only using the point formulas, is called the price elasticity supply, also known as E sub S. E sub S is the percent change quantity supply divided by percent change in price, and this one is either positive or zero. It can never be negative. And so here our breakdown goes from is E sub S greater than one, or is it between zero and one? Or is it equal to one? And equal to one is like a Sasquatch sighting. It's rare. We don't worry about that. So greater than one between zero and one are what you need to know. 
Percent change quantity supplied divided by percent change price is the formula. So let's go back to our example here. And again, I've got a little prompt reminding y'all. Okay. It says price goes up 13%. So what kind of 13 goes where? Positive 13 in the denominator. Quantity supplied goes up 9%. So what goes where? Positive 9 in the numerator. So E sub S is going to be equal to 9 over 13. Now, class, if you have a fraction with the numerator lower than the denominator, that number is less than 1 but bigger than 0. And so E sub S between 0 and 1 means supply is what kind of elastic with respect to price? Price inelastic. That means that uh, price changes by a bigger percentage than quantity. That's very similar to price elastic to demand. Okay, one more to go. If the price goes down 2%, quantity supply goes down 17%. What sign do the 17 and the 2 have? That's right, they're both negative. Where does the 2 go? Denominator and the 17 in the numerator. But what kind of 2 and what kind of 17? Negative. Now remember when you divide two negatives, the minus cancels out and you get a positive answer. 17 over 2. If you have a fraction with the numerator larger than the denominator, it's always bigger than 1. And if E sub S is bigger than 1, that means supply is price changes less than quantity. Quantity is highly responsive. Correct. Price elastic. Okay. So, folks, a lot of people say, wow, this is a lot easier than price elasticity of demand. And my response to that is, well, it has mostly to do with the fact that we're just doing the point formulas and we're mainly looking for general concepts here. Now again, one last reminder about E sub I and E sub AB. With those cases, you will never have a denominator of zero. Price will always change by a certain percentage. However, if you're told it does not matter if income goes up or goes down a certain percentage, there's no change in quantity demanded, a zero in the numerator, a non-zero number in the denominator means the E sub I is zero. And the same thing could be for E sub AB. Doesn't matter if the, uh, uh, if the denominator is a number, if the numerator is zero, that means there's no change in the quantity demand of product B, regardless of how the price of A or B changes. Zero divided by some other number is still zero, which means the products are unrelated to consumption. Be watchful for that. Those could show up on homeworks or tests. And so that's our last topic for unit one. And I hope to do some more videos for unit two, but unfortunately this time I cannot promise any. So I wish you all success and I'll see you all in class.